Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Unique Ways with Thomas Gerard, an audio podcast. We've got a really awesome guest on today. She's a graphic designer, author, illustrator, and silkscreen printer. Her work is characterized by boldness, humor, and a constant quest for synthesis. She likes best to deal with cultural, political, and social issues, but equally loves nonsense and playfulness. Please join me in welcoming, and I'm going to butcher this, Teresa Dralovich. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Are you ready for 20 questions? I'm almost ready, yes. <laughs> okay, question one. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. What do you do? Well, you presented me in a just perfect way, I would say. So um, I'm a graphic designer. I would say more a poster designer, author, than um, uh, somebody who makes layouts uh, and so forth. Uh, I'm not very good at it. So I'm more um, a designer, author. Um, I'm an illustrator also and a screen printer, as you said. Um, I don't consider myself uh, an artist and I have always long discussions with my mother because I really respond to, to a request, to a problem that I try to solve. Um, I react to um, yeah, something that is uh, needed by a client or a community or something else. Um, Great. Okay. Question two. What's a key piece of knowledge that makes you different? I think that is the commitment to create something um, that, that has an impact on the viewer. And I try to do this with the, the most uh, basic tools in order to have something really simple and um, readable by everybody. Great. Okay. Uh, question three, why this of all things, why do you do what you do? Well, um, consider myself very lucky because I found my way uh, quite late uh, in life. So I um, spent a few years studying political science, which uh, you would say is not really a straight line from to illustration and design. But um, I finally got here um, a little bit by chance. I would say I'm really obsessed by the combination of uh, signs, uh, words, typography and pictures and uh, I'm also very interested in um, language our language works uh, translation and I'm lucky because I live in Brussels where um, everybody speaks many languages and um, I would say it's always an issue which is really inter interesting. Great and some people struggle with number four but the question is what does your future look like? I don't think I would struggle because basically I would just like to keep on doing what I do, maybe on a bigger scale, on more international scale, and who knows, maybe this podcast will help. <laughs> Great. And number five, we say is unique to this show. The question is, let's talk about location. How does the notion of place play into what you do? It does play a lot um, in several ways. Uh, most importantly, I have a, a beautiful uh, studio where I work all alone. <laughs> um, I'm very spoiled and this is really my uh, world and uh, it's full of books and, and posters and uh, letters everywhere. And um, it's really important for me to work in my studio. Of course, I, I work also um, in other places. And then um, secondly, I would say uh, Brussels, the city where I live is really important, is the city where I discovered what I could do with my life. And uh, it's a messy, uh, very um, unwelcoming city some, for some people. Um, it's important also uh, in terms of place, the fact that I'm a, an immigrant. So maybe I'm, um, I have, my shoes in two different places, my, my, my feet, I don't know how to say. And um, I'm a little bit more alert than people who have been living here or the labs on some topics, I would say. Perfect. And number six, if you had to start from the beginning, what advice would you give your former younger self? That's really difficult. <laughs> um, my first thought was I would 
tell my present self to uh, look like a bit more like my former self because it's true that in the beginning of my let's say career I was very determined and I worked all the time and maybe sometimes now I just relax more um uh, I don't know if uh, that's a good thing um but to my former self uh, I would tell something very banal it's just believe in yourself <laughs> um yeah all comes good great and what's a day in your life like a day in my life I think is for some people could be very boring uh, basically go to my studio and work <laughs> all day. Um, I like to begin with something very practical to do with my hands, drawing or just cutting paper or tidying up. Um, ideally, I would uh, spend half of my day uh, drawing or researching, uh, designing and the other half uh, printing, which is a big passion. It's also important to have a nap. It's like a, an addiction I have and um, some very good ideas come while I'm taking a nap. And sometimes I do also sport, which is also important for my brain. <laughs> Great, and hey, lifelong learning is a popular topic. How do you stay up to date? I would say I don't. Um, I think my strength uh, lies in um, <clears throat> uh, analogic work, I would say. So basically, it doesn't really evolve. So my strategy to stay up to date is to collaborate and to work with other people who are really cutting edge in their own domains and they're much more up to date than me. Great. And number nine, tools. What tools do you use? Do you use digital and analog tools? I got my first laptop like a month ago. It's my father who just gave me his old uh, Macintosh. So definitely I'm not a digital nomad. Um, I don't need much to, to work uh, abroad or while I'm not in my studio, I just need uh, basically a marker, some paper, maybe a cutter. And um, I'm not very good in traveling. So, it, yeah, it's not my thing. Um, Great. And halfway number 10, how do you deal with work-life balance? Before um, the birth of my daughters, I didn't at all. So there was totally no balance and it was just work um, with some poses of course uh, now well they're almost 15 so I kind of learned that you must stop sometimes and there are weekends and holidays which is really wonderful I mean um, but uh, I it took some time for me to learn actually great and if you weren't doing what you do now what might you be doing that's a very hard question. I thought a lot about that and basically not much. Um, I could run a bookshop probably um, and I could uh, maybe walk with horses. I don't know why I had this idea, but it seems very nice to stay up outside in the nature, but it's a hard work. And what would you not like to do with your career? In my career, I wouldn't like to serve uh, big corporations. I wouldn't like to be told what I have to draw or design or think even. Um, yeah, I wouldn't like to follow guidelines, uh, basically, or to spend my whole day in front of a computer. Great. And can you share a word, quote, or sentence? I can share a word. Uh, it's French. It's atelier. Um, it's a word uh, whose uh, meaning I really discovered here in Brussels. Uh, Belgium is very uh, close to this tradition of applied arts. So atelier is basically some place, your world, as I said before, when you, where you make things. But it's also um, a workshop. So um, a place where you, a moment where you share things. Um, which is, I find, really inspiring. 
Great. And how about a least favorite word, quote, or sentence? Oh, this was also very difficult. And uh, uh, my first thought was time is money. Uh, but then I thought about some feminist issues I'm uh, dealing with. Uh, well, it's everyday work, I would say. And I thought about um, women or even feminists who really say say uh, often during interviews when I was young or little I was a tomboy which for me is really summing up the core of the this gender roles on all the problems linked to it and if you had to choose one word to describe yourself what might it be for me it was assertive but that I think it's too optimistic so I'm not sure. I, I asked my one of my daughters and she said carefree, which I like because uh, it's yeah some sort of lightness even when I deal with the um, complicated topics or, or yes, political issues, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, Great. carefree. <laughs> Great. And what keeps you up at night? At this moment of my life is my um, the, the, it's the possible passing of my parents, which is inevitable. Um, it's also yeah wars going on like uh, the situation in Gaza, in Ukraine, Sudan. Um, I can't do much about it, but yeah, it's it's hard not to think about it when you're trying to sleep. Great, and final stretch here. What's the dream you're chasing? Um, I have a double dream uh, linked to my to my uh, job, I would say. And uh, I would like to do something huge, like a, a huge wall painting or fresco. I don't know exactly how would you, you name it in English. And um, to mark... Uh, not to mark my, my, not my personality, but to just leave a sign in my city and possibly somewhere else. And also I would like to do something, to make something very small, like a stamp, uh, which is really challenging. Um, I know the series, the love series in the States, and uh, if they called me to do, to do that, I would be really happy. <laughs> Great. And what inspires you? Um, the city inspires me a lot. So any urban environment uh, with the signs, uh, traffic signs, post, um, people, uh, that's really a source of uh, inspiration. And when I bike uh, in the city, in Brussels or Paris or whatever, I get many, many ideas and um, like uh, opposite the, the country is just, you know, completely flat. I have no ideas, I'm bored and so forth. Um, but I wanted also to name um, activists, uh, female activists, well, so more. Um, there are so many people that really risk their lives and that's really a, a source of inspiration more ethic and moral inspiration. Any advice you'd like to share? Uh, well, I was about to say, no, I don't like to, to give advice. I'm not really, um, I have not so much experience, uh, but uh, there is a line by Sister Coretta that you might know uh, that says, um, the only rule is work, which I found um, very right. Great, and number 20, how can our listeners keep tabs on you? How do we follow you? What's our call to action? Uh, if some listeners wish to follow me, that was that would be just great. And um, on Instagram with my surname and name, I have a website. Um, that's my name, teresasdralevich.net. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming on. You know, so cool to connect Europe and Canada like this um, and, uh, and you know, so easily be connected these days. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>